if everyone can take their seats, we'll get started. I want to welcome you to this uh, special meeting on the I-5 El Toro Improvement Project. I'm Siobhan Foster, the COO from VMS. I would like to start off by welcoming our uh, dignitaries tonight. Um, from the city, we have Mayor Cynthia Connor, Noel Hatch, Mayor Pro Tem, and Councilwomen Sherry Horn and Carol Moore. Welcome. We also have City Manager Chris Macon and Rebecca, I'm sorry, I can't remember your last name, so Pennington. Welcome. From the village, I'd like to welcome Juanita Skillman, President of United Laguna Woods Mutual, as well as Carl Randazzo, First Vice President, and Elsie Addington, a board member. Welcome. We also have this evening Joan Milliman, the Secretary of the Golden Rain Foundation, as well as Pat English from the Golden Rain Foundation. Also joining us is Jeff Parker, the CEO of Village Management Services. On behalf of Village Management Services, I'd like to thank Okta and Caltrans for making this presentation possible and very accessible to our residents this evening. Village Television is recording this uh, presentation this evening, so it will be available on our uh, website. It will be a YouTube uh, presentation that anyone can view at any time. This evening, I'd like to introduce Fernando Chavarria from Okta. He's the Public Outreach of Officer, and Dino Stimation, Caltrans Project Manager, who will be giving tonight's presentation. Please welcome both of them to our stage this evening. Good evening, everyone. I wasn't nervous until Ms. Foster said that we're being recorded for TV. <laughs> um, if you'll bear with me for a moment as I get my notes. Um, Ms. Foster, uh, Mr. Parker, thank you very much for inviting us here. Uh, good evening, Mayor Connors, uh, members of the City Council, directors of the village, and uh, Mr. Macon, and of course, esteemed residents. Uh, as Ms. Foster shared, my name is Fernando Chavarria, and I have the privilege of serving as a community relations officer for the Orange County Transportation Authority, uh, more commonly known as OCTA. Um, it's my privilege to serve on behalf of OCTA, and it's our team's pleasure to be here with you in an effort to provide some information and hopefully to be of service to you. On behalf of OCTA staff, I'd like to thank you for the invitation to present the information, including the boards and video illustrations that were available at the official public meeting hearing uh, that I'm sure many or some of you attended on April 18th at the Holiday Inn in Lake Forest. Uh, we certainly appreciate you welcoming our staff here tonight. Uh, we'd like to share and confirm to you that we understand that uh, and are aware that this potential project uh, is of importance and of interest to your community. We hope that tonight's presentation serves to add to your understanding, add to your understanding, of the potential alternatives that Dino will touch on, of the ongoing process and how it will unfold in the next couple of months, and of the very important public comment period, which uh, I'm sure you're aware concludes on May the 20th. That's a very important date for you all to remember, for our community to remember. Now, as you've noticed, we've placed some sign-in cards. Um, we will be having, if you'll pardon me, some boxes so that you could deposit those uh, sign-in cards. And the reason for them is that if you'd like to stay in touch with the project directly, we'd appreciate you extending us the courtesy of your information so that we can update you and you in turn can communicate with us. We will also have, thank you, Dino. 
we will also have some comment cards for you, like these, and we'll hand them out shortly. Uh, you all have a breakout room where you'll have an opportunity to fill them out. And we'll have a big orange tub where we ask that you be kind enough if you fill them out, if you so choose, to drop them in there um, before you leave. Um, allow me, we had a little change here uh, in terms of our, of our process. Uh, I'd like to make mention, and you may have seen in the lobby, you'll see again on the boards here, that the project has established uh, a mailing address. So even if you decide to fill out a card today, or if you decide not to, or if subsequent to this meeting you want to fill out a card, we would like for you to take that. We'd like to invite you to be aware of that address and don't limit yourself to commenting just tonight. You have every right to comment hereafter. If by chance you'd like to email, there is also an email address that we've set up for the project and we welcome you emailing that address as well. Um, now th this is also very important and I've kind of alluded to it. It may be obvious, but I think it's worth our collective benefit to state it. Um, we are sharing the comment card, but you have, as you well know, every right to write your own letter on your own stationery. Do not feel at all compelled to limit your comments to the length of this card or another. Um, clearly, you can write as much or as little as you see fit, and OCTA and Caltrans welcomes and invites your comments. Um, but again, the deadline to receive those comments is May the 20th. I'll turn it over to Dino shortly, but before we do, I wanted to take the opportunity to identify and introduce our staff to briefly preview the presentation. And I should share that the content on these boards is the same content, the same information that was presented at the public hearing. There has been no changes to it. And this same information is available on the OCTA website and accessible through Caltrans's website as well. Um, allow me to introduce our team so you're aware. We're all wearing name tags, I believe. Uh, if you have a question or you want to approach us subsequent to the meeting, we encourage you and we welcome you doing so. Joining me from the OCTA team is Logan Selleck to my right, your left. On the left is Jared Hill from OCTA. Michael Sudam, we have uh, consultants that help us on projects, Michael and his team. Justin Glover and Maria Gonzalez, who you may have met at the welcome table, are part of their team. And also, um, I want to introduce Lisa Ramsey, the Chief of Project Management for Caltrans. This is a project that OCTA and Caltrans are working on together in coordination or in consultation, collaboration with the cities. Lisa is, is uh, Chief of Project Management. David Matza from Public Affairs, I don't see him, but Jared Lindo is here from the Environmental and Engineering Department. Uh, please take note of that. And Justin Lesnecki from the Public Affairs Office at uh, Caltrans. Finally, Dino will be giving you the presentation. Um, as you're aware, the California environment, this is very important to distinguish from the public hearing. Uh, the California Environmental Quality Act and the National Environmental Policy Act are the acts that govern this environmental process. Um, and in accordance with these, we held that public official hearing. This is not, strictly speaking, a public hearing. It is a supplemental public meeting that we hope will foster added understanding, awareness, and dialogue. Um, while tonight's meeting will be held in a, in a public fashion, we're also going to have a question and answer session. And in an effort to be inclusive and fair, um, trying to incorporate all areas of the room, we're gonna rotate and go around the room beginning on my lower right, your lower left, and taking questions from each section one at a time, work our way around the room till we come full circle and then begin anew. There will be, of course, some questions that we don't have answers to perhaps, or that we may need to consult over the coming days or direct you to the technical studies 
that were prepared for this. There were, as you may know, about 16 total studies. There's a big environmental document, so it's a complex project. And we hope you'll extend us the courtesy of your patience if some of these questions we aren't able to, to precisely answer them, but we'll do our best. Um, the order of the presentation, as you can see on the board, will provide an overview of background, alternatives, we'll touch on the environmental process, we'll um, provide our contact information so we can stay connected. Uh, we want you to know that we're here to serve you and that you should have access to us as your public servants. And then finally, we will show the video, right? And it's a video that attempts to animate, uh, to provide three, 3D renditions of the alternatives being considered, the two alternatives with the variation. Um, pardon me? Two, two alternatives with a, with a variation. Um, Lastly, we want to say that we understand that some of you may support aspects of an alternative and some of you may oppose it. Whatever your position, we respect it and we welcome it and indeed we encourage you to submit your comments. Uh, this project isn't new. Some of you will recognize Measure M. In 2006, about 70% of Orange County voters passed Measure M. And this project was a part of that overall transportation plan. Since then, OCTA and Caltrans have worked to develop the project, um, and it, we're currently in prelim preliminary engineering and environmental review. There's a little background to you in for you in terms of the origin of the project. The lead agencies, as I shared, the lead agency and the overseeing agency is Caltrans, your state department of transportation. And they have uh, oversight in terms of the environmental process. That is, they're charged with making sure that the environmental process is executed properly in accordance with the policies. OCTA, your local transportation, county transportation agency is the project sponsor. And I should also note that as part of this effort, we have what we call a project development team and members of the project area cities, including the city of Lake Forest, the city of Laguna Hills, and the city of Laguna, uh, Laguna Woods have a, a seat at the table throughout the development process, including during this process. So members of your city staff have access to the meetings we have and the technical discussions and this entire process. I'll turn it over to Dino, who will cover the meeting. And we're going to ask, I'm going to step across the stage. Um, we were told that if we use the uh, pointer, it might kind of drown it out. So we hope you'll bear with us. And I'll maybe do a little Vanna White here and there. Um, so you'll pardon me. Um, but we'll step to the, to the side of the room and try to indicate um, places on the board where maybe you want to direct your attention as Dino makes his comments. So with that, thank you very much. We're very grateful to be here. Um, Mr. Dino Stimation. Thank you, Fernando. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Dino Stimation. I am a Caltrans project manager for this project. My headquarters office is in the city of Santa Ana in Orange County. What is this slide about? The need is the problem. We know that there's congestion at this interchange, and the purpose is how to address this problem. So there's three points up there, heavy peak congestion. The geometry out there, the configuration, is, is, is a problem because there's so much traffic and there's not enough spacing that we need. And the third is the delays, it's being stuck in the traffic on on and off ramps and getting through El Toro interchange road and all that, that's, that's a problem. So those are the three points that I want to make. The purpose is address. So we want to improve the flow and the traffic at the signals. We want to reduce congestion, and we want it through the, the local streets. And this is the last one, reduce backup from the freeways. So the description of the project, you could see that there's three cities along I-5 and the north arrow is pointing up, so I-5 north toward Los Angeles. So the, the project is currently in the environmental phase. We have two build alternatives. 
we have actually three alternatives. The third one is, but don't tell anybody this, is the no build. All three alternatives are viable alternatives. So we have a no build alternative, and then we have two ideas that formed into alternatives called alternative two and four. That's how we named the alternatives. And the, these two alternatives are called build alternatives. You're actually proposing something to improve and address those, those, that previous slide about the congestion, the problem of the project. Okay. The cost for the project is arranging from 175 million to 241 million. This includes, this is current cost. This includes all the structure work, all the roadway work, all the properties that are affected with these alternatives. This is, this is a quantification of what these alternatives are. And the estimate time for this study to be completed would be the end of this calendar year, November 2019. So it's assumed that if this project was going to be funded for one of the build alternatives, then it would go to 2027. But if the no build is selected, there is no project. There's no proposal. It stops. So, so just bear in mind that final design is about choosing a build alternative. And there's two on the table, alternative two and alternative four, and I'll show you the slides in a minute. Construction would begin roughly in 2018, and then it open up to the public around 2030, and that would be December 30th, as I can recall. So the proposed alternatives. Alternatives that we use at Caltrans is ideas that actually are formulated into actual impacts of right-of-way property takes and construction of pavement and steel and all this combined together into some location, and that's what an alternative is. So it's an idea that turns into something which is alternative two, and we call this the flyover. So what, what I want to do here on this slide, and it's very important to, to orientate us, where is this proposed work? So let's do this. The I-5, Interstate 5, runs left to the right. So going left is north to Los Angeles. Going right is going towards San Diego in the southbound direction. And up and down the, the, the map is El Toro Road. So what I'm going to do is break it up in four pieces. The lower left is the city of Laguna Woods at gate six. Everybody see that, gate six? Raise your hand. OK. Going over to, to the right where Fernando is, that's the mall in the city of Laguna Hills on the other side of Laguna Woods, I mean, Laguna um, uh, El Toro Road, excuse me. And then going up to the right corner, that's the city of Lake Forest. There's no proposals to modify anything to that off-ramp or that loop on-ramp. Now going to the left of the, the map, where you see in red, those are the property takes for this alternative. That's the left quadrant or the section of this map. Left of El Toro Road, and that's where uh, Bridger Road. Does everybody know that you see Bridger Road there? Okay. That's where McDonald's and that's where the nursery is. So this alternative, what's unique about this alternative, if you were traveling on the freeway going southbound and you're trying to get to eastbound El Toro and you want to go toward Rockfield, this proposal has a unique angle flyover structure bridge. It's an off-ramp, a new off-ramp that will take you right to where McDonald's is and you can make a left to go straight. And that will bypass the two intersections at Avenida de Colada and Paseo de Valencia. And the next intersection would be Avenida de Colada and El Toro. So those intersections, you would not have to go to those intersections. You will go straight to where that McDonald's is. That's what's unique about this alternative. It's a new off-ramp. It's a flyover. 
It goes up over the freeway. The highest point, I just measured it today, is around 35, 36 feet. And it goes over the highest point of the freeway would be the northbound uh, HOV, which is the carpool lane. That's what this alternative does. Now, if you're going westbound from Lake Forest down the map to go northbound the freeway, you would take the new on-ramp. You see the, see the old on-ramp behind McDonald's? Everybody see that? Okay. This on-ramp right here will no longer be there based on this alternative. It would be, it would be coupled with the new off-ramp. So they would be a couple. And that on and off-ramp would be, would be uh, aligned with the, the existing off and on-ramp over here. So no on-ramp, it would be relocated to the other side of McDonald's, in front of McDonald's. Does everybody see that now? Okay, that's what this proposal is, and I, I, that's why I'm really here today, is to explain what these alternatives do. Okay, we're gonna take a next slide and have a cross-section. What is a cross-section? A cross-section is a slice of a particular part of the map. Okay. This is the cross-section, the slice, and if you were standing or uh, driving north on the freeway, that's how you would look at it. And that's what's projected up there. So the center of the freeway is right here. And everything to the right is northbound lanes. You see that? You see, you see Kavanaugh Park over there? That gives you a, a, an idea of what it would look like at that point. And everything to the left would be the southbound be traffic going this way, but you're, but you're still looking this way, so everything is to the left. And you see Avenida de Clara. So that gives you a little background of what that alternative is. Okay, this is the same map as the other one. Gate six and El Toro and the freeway. What's unique about this alternative is that Again, traveling in the southbound direction of the I-5, Interstate 5, you have now a choice to go to the next interchange location, which is new on and off ramps. They're in front of the mall, in front of J.C. Penney's. Does everybody see J.C. Penney's there? This actually separates the traffic and spreads out the traffic, actually. And that's the southbound improvements. And what's unique also is that there's a collector distributor road. This is a separate system from the freeway lanes. So it'd be divided out. So the people exiting to go west El Toro Road or go east or anywhere around these three cities they will be separated by the traffic of the freeway going to San Diego, thus providing a better operations. And then the northbound is behind McDonald's. It's the existing on-ramp and would be improved all the way through the park to the next interchange off-ramp. What that does, it provides more, more uh, storage of, of cars traveling westbound on El Toro to go northbound I-5, providing a better operations. This is alternative four. Okay, this is also alternative four. Exactly everything the same in these two cities, Laguna Woods and Laguna Hills. But the difference is now we're gonna use the on-ramp at Bridger Road. So Bridger Road will, will be still a road, but the on-ramp would start here at the park and continue all the way to the next interchange off-ramp. So that that's an option B. That's the only difference between the two slides. Does everybody get that? It's just the northbound where, the on, where you're gonna access the freeway. 
That's the difference. It's working. OK, here's another slice of what the alternative four would look like at this point. But you're looking toward Los Angeles northbound. So you have the freeway. I'm sorry. Looking southbound, excuse me, there's the freeway all to the right here. So this is, this is the um, Avenue de Colada. I'm sorry, right here. I'm sorry, look, just bear with me, it's northbound. You're looking at the slice that way. Sorry. That's the cross section, that's how it looks. Do you know? Yes. Oh, yeah. The, the proposed work for Alternate 4, the darker shading represents new pavement, so it would be actually a wider freeway on each side of the freeway. You can see the dark. And the lighter shades is what's out there now. It's the existing. We have more, one more cross section. This gives you another view of Avenida de Colada. You're looking this way, and you have the freeway to the right. That's what you would see. Again, the pavement is darker, that's being widened or proposed. And then you have all that space in between. Avenue de, de Colada and the f Interstate 5. Okay, I'll hand over uh, the mic to Fernan Fernando, and he could talk about the noise. I'm, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Um, un unfortunately for us, a member of our noise engineering team wasn't able to be present, but some of you will recall that this board covering uh, different uh, noise evaluation process was presented at the public hearing, and so we wanted to show it here tonight, not omit it, and just touch on it um, generally. We would invite you that if you have questions, um, please ask them and then also perhaps extend us again the, the opportunity to go back and touch base with our expert staff so that we could um, provide that information. But the board that you see here um, is essentially an overview of the process that must take place in order to determine if a sound wall can be constructed. And so there's a lot on that board. It's meant to be read carefully, but I'll try and summarize it for you. There are five squares, five steps um, that, that must occur. So the first step is determining whether there is, in accordance with the rules, so to speak, whether there is, in fact, a traffic noise impact. There's a decibel level that must be measured, and if that decibel level is measured, as you can see, if the answer to that question is yes, then you go to step two. If the answer to the question, is there a defined traffic noise impact, is no, then the wall is no longer considered eligible and the evaluation stops. The second step has to do with what is categorized feasibility. That is to say that if a sound wall were to be constructed, does the sound wall in fact serve a purpose? Does it meet its purpose of reducing noise? In this case, at this step, by five decibels. 
So if the sound wall that is modeled reduces the noise level by five decibels, the answer to that question is yes, and you continue down your path. I'm trying to think of an analogy, right? You get a kind of a monopoly, you go forward, right? Um, the second step, as you can see, is titled reasonable list, which is a little bit confusing, but it's also kind of similar to the feasibility. And as you can see in that third square, almost dead center, this requires that the noise level go down by seven decibels, first five, then seven, and you can see at one or more receptors. That is where the, measure, the measurements, the noise measurements are being taken. And again, that same approach is followed. If the answer is yes, you move forward. It's a green light. If the answer is no, it's a red light, you stop. Reasonableness also, number two level of reasonableness, has to do, frankly, with money. Does the estimated cost of the wall, so if you were to build the wall, and let's say that the estimated cost for the wall for the sake of discussion is $100. But the allowance, right, there's a formula that issues an allowance to every benefited receptor. Let's say that the, um, there are 10 receptors and that the allowance is $20. Then the total allowance is $200. The estimated cost of the wall is $100, therefore it achieves that level of reasonableness. But if the total allowance is less than the total estimated cost, it does not cover the reasonableness and, the, and it, is, it is determined not reasonable and you hit a red light and the process stops, broadly speaking. Finally, um, a very important point this is related to the property owners. Uh, believe it or not, there are property owners that for one reason or another decide that they don't want the wall to be built. And those reasons vary. They vary because sometimes people, for example, have pools. They don't want the, 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 the wall to cast shadows on the pools. Uh, sometimes um, the Property owners have to convey rights for maintenance of the wall. Sometimes they don't want to do that. Sometimes it's just preference. But that last level of reasonableness is in fact concurrence with the benefited receptors. Sometimes, broadly speaking, if a benefited receptor is on the end of a row of properties, homes, and that person objects to it, it's on the end, but the rest of the wall is kept intact, right? But if there is a property owner that lives dead center and you would then have a wall, a gap, and then another wall, that undermines the integrity, the soundness of the wall, and therefore the wall couldn't be built. This is just, again, an overall process. If you have more questions about the details of the process, um, please ask them. The other thing is I mentioned the different studies. There is a noise study online. So all of the results, all of the details, all of the data, everything, the process, you can identify that for yourself, not take it from any of us, um, and check yourself. Now, um, very briefly, we shared about NEPA and CEQA. Um, those are the regulations that oversee. This is directly from the statute, from the guidelines. Um, this is in language that's been improvised. There's essentially five things that CEQA seeks to do. One is to inform government decision makers, including your city council, of course, of, about the, the potential project, the impacts. The other is, if and when necessary, to identify ways to mitigate potential impacts, to make them less than, broadly speaking, loosely speaking to address the environmental effect through the use of alternatives, avoidance, minim minimization, mitigation measures, to try and come up with solutions essentially that address the challenges associated with the project. And what we're doing now, disclosing um, why an agency may approve the project. So right now the document that's circulating is draft. When that document is finalized at the end of the year, it will be final and you will be able to read the decision 
or the basis, the rationale for why that project was approved, that alternative, or as Dino said, maybe why that project or the alternative wasn't approved. You'll recall and keep in mind there is, in fact, the no-build option. And then finally, our, our responsibility, our duty, is to try and promote public participation as we're doing here. I would take a moment and reassure everyone in the audience that OCTA and Caltrans really went above and beyond and exceeded any, by a very substantial amount, the promotion of the meeting of the public hearing, uh, including direct mailers, um, advertisements in different publications, email, et cetera, et cetera. So we've tried to comply with the spirit of that promotion. Um, when you look at the document, there's essentially three sections. I like to say this is kind of a, it kind of looks like an iPhone, an iPad, right? Where you, if you're interested in community impacts, you would kind of click on that or you would go to that section. If you're interested in noise, you would go to the noise section. And so this is essentially that report that is circulating now and that is available to you. So whatever your interest in these three general areas, um, you can go and check that. And of course, there's the supporting um, technical studies. This is the process, as you can see, dead center in the blue. We are here. Following this, toward the bottom uh, third of the screen, a recommended preferred alternative. Um, before we get to that point, I imagine that many of you will make your comments. Those comments will be taken into account. All of the different cities will likely, I don't want to put words in, in, in anybody's mouth, but it's likely that the cities will communicate. Um, and then we'll see what that recommended preferred alternative is. Um, project approval. This is very important for you all. The final, final decision to approve a recommended alternative rests with Caltrans District Director. Caltrans District Director for uh, District Number 12, Mr. Ryan Chamberlain. But you all have the Orange County Transportation Authority, of course, right? And I imagine that the authority and the Caltrans, uh, I think Lisa from, from the Office of Project Management will agree, that all of you, your cities, will all talk before that final decision is made. Um, very strictly speaking, we're the messengers today, and we obviously, the scope of our authority rests at a certain point, and then we turn it over, Dino and them turn it over um, to decision makers. Stay connected. We, um, we like to share our numbers, our, tele our emails, but also our faces. So that if we happen to run into you at the grocery store, you feel honestly welcome. We're your public servants. We want you to know um, how you can contact us, and we want you to recognize us and, and ask us to serve you when we can do that. There's contact information. All of this is outside and online as well. Um, and then finally, most importantly, we'll wrap up where we started. Public comments are very important. The public, public comment period was extended. Um, I think you all should be grateful to the people that uh, you, have, you, have, you have thanks to give because we've had requests, including from your city, to extend that public comment to May 20th. Uh, I personally think it's a great idea. The comment period does end on May the 20th, and so we again encourage you that if you wish that you submit your comment. And then the responses to your comments will be published in the final environmental document. And it's at that time that you'll not only be able to see your own question and the response to it, but you'll get to see all of the other questions, all of the other opinions that were made part of the record and thereby appreciate the, the totality of the conversation. Um, we'll, uh, we'll note, you can take a picture of this outside if you'd like or jot it down, but these are the mailing addresses and the email address. Um, again, don't feel obligated to limit yourself um, to tonight. And then I believe we will now have the video presentation, which is about five minutes. Thank you.
The El Toro Road Interchange, which runs through the cities of Lake Forest, Laguna Hills, and Laguna Woods, is one of the most congested interchanges in South Orange County. The Orange County Transportation Authority is partnering with Caltrans to improve throughput on El Toro Road and nearby local streets by reconfiguring Interstate 5 on and off ramps. The project is currently in the environmental review process and Caltrans, in conjunction with OCTA, is looking at two potential traffic relief alternatives. Our first of three views of the project looks southbound over I-5 at the El Toro Road interchange. Alternative 2, the flyover. In this alternative, southbound traffic exiting I-5 and entering the El Toro Road interchange will have the option to split to a new structure that flies over I-5 to transport motorists directly to eastbound El Toro Road. This split helps alleviate some of the pressure from exiting traffic on the existing southbound off-ramp through Avenida de Carlota by bypassing two intersections. Next, where the new flyover off-ramp lands, the existing I-5 northbound on-ramp will be relocated to align with the existing I-5 on and off-ramps south of El Toro Road. The rendering in this video depicts certain areas as gray because future use of this property has not been contemplated or determined at this time. Alternative 4, Collector Distributor Road and Hook Ramps. A collector distributor road will be constructed. Traffic traveling on it will be separated from mainline I-5 southbound traffic with a concrete barrier, creating a new independent traffic system with hook ramps. Our next view will show a more detailed view of this system. For northbound I-5, the existing El Toro on-ramp will be extended to remove traffic congestion from El Toro westbound. Our second view of the project looks southbound over I-5 at the El Toro Road interchange from an angle. Notice the closer view of the Alternative 2 flyover touchdown point. Also note the closer view of the existing conditions which will experience traffic relief due to the flyover's traffic bypassing the two intersections. From this view of Alternative 4, the new independent collector distributor road system is more visible. Note the new on and off hook ramps and widened bridge. These features will alleviate conditions at the existing on and off ramps by distributing traffic to the other side of El Toro Road. Our final view of the project looks northbound over I-5 at the El Toro Road interchange. Here's another view of Alternative 2's new southbound flyover off ramp that connects to eastbound El Toro Road. Notice the new view of the relocated westbound El Toro to northbound I-5 on-ramp that's aligned with the existing I-5 on and off ramps. As mentioned in the previous two views, the flyover allows motorists to bypass two intersections on the other side of I-5. This angle shows a better view of the new Alternative 4 Collector Distributor Road at the existing southbound I-5 El Toro hook ramps. Also shown is a closer view of the extended I-5 northbound on-ramp from westbound El Toro Road. This vantage point also provides a view of Alternative 4, Option B. In Option B, Alternative 4 remains the same except for the utilization of Bridger Road to create a new on-ramp to northbound I-5. Notice how this option also preserves access to the businesses on Bridger Road. Depending on the alternative approved, construction could begin as early as 2027. Um, as we start at the outset, we'll try and be inclusive of the whole room, and if we may, We'll start, uh, we'll name this section A or one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, members of our team, including Logan, will be there. And then we'll take one question from each section, if that's okay, and then we'll do the round. So let me ask any questions here in section one. The last row, Logan, um, Dino, could I ask you to step to the center of the room, please? Oh, th thank you, Mr. Macon. Um, 
A very important point. You'll pardon me, ma'am. Um, thank you again. Uh, I, I, I want to share in the, in the interest of transparency and so everyone is aware, what becomes part of the public record are your written comments. Um, and so therefore, if you make a comment during uh, the question and answer session, um, please, we would encourage you to write it down as well so that it'd be added to the public record. Um, I apologize for the inconvenience, that's the policy. We would also ask in the interest of time if you could for, uh, direct, ask your question in the form of a question if at all possible. Thank you, Mr. Macon. Uh, Logan, please. How will this affect St. George's Episcopal Church? I'll show you on the video. Is your question about either alternatives? Did everybody hear that? Her, the, the lady's question was, um, how would it affect St. George's Church in terms of noise, the building, and any other effects? Thank you. Through Avenue. Okay. So the church is over here where the off ramp is. Does everybody see that? The, the flyover is for alleviating the traffic on this off ramp by creating a new off ramp to go that way to the Lake Forest. So the question is what's the impacts? As you know, there's many studies that are in the draft environmental document. And I know the whole project, but I'm not the experts at the environmental studies and the noise studies. But what they tell me, and it's in its document, the, the special, uh, the, the team, the actual Caltrans team that did the studies, they do biology and sound and all, all the different kind of studies to see the impacts. And there was no, there was no impact to the property, but there's a visual, because the, the, the bridge goes up and you could see the structure. Some folks have trees in front in the neighborhood, they won't see it, and others will see it. But it is, it is a bridge and it crosses over. That's, that's what this alternative is. Okay, thank you, that's a good question. He wants to know how, where this is oriented. Okay, so this is the five freeway. These are the south, southbound lanes going to San Diego, and this is northbound going to Los Angeles. El Toro is over here. That's going east, and that's going west. So everybody get that? Correct. This is St. El, El Toro is up there. It's all up there. Does everybody get that? The laser pointer is small dot, and you won't be able to see it. That's what they told me. Sorry for that. And, so can we you'll, go to the you'll, you'll pardon us for that. I, I would add one point to St. George's. Um, as is part of the public record, uh, Reverend McCann from St. George um, has uh, made comment for the record prior to this public comment period, so the church is aware. The church has also asked for a meeting, and we've provided a meeting. Um, and I anticipate, barring the unexpected, that they have not, they will if they haven't already made comment. Um, but Reverend McCann has, and a few of her parishioners gone to OCTA meetings and shared some comments, right? Uh, there are audio recordings of that if you're interested and we can um, advise you of that. 
there was a lady in section two in the back that had a question. Ma'am, do you still have your question? If you'll allow me, I think, council member, you have a question as well? Let me, let me work my way over here if, I, if we'll, you would. We'll make a rounds. We'll come back to you. It seems that that empty land, from what I understand, is going to be for businesses and for a, a project of about three or four buildings for uh, apartments. And each of the apartments over there, uh, it, it's the old mall that we're talking about. Over here? Y yes. OK. Yes, yes. So if they want to go home from work or they want to go and use the freeway, how do they access around to get there? Do they have to go all the way around or what? Well, with this proposed Altera 4 with the new on and off ramps right in front of JCPenney's, they would, they would exit here and they would have an option to go get exit by the church or continue on this collector distributor road, which is, which is proposed for this alternative, to go to that next off ramp, which is crossing over El Toro Road. You see the little bridge there? Right there. Let me just get that, what's that? This is from the from the El Toro Road to that off-ramp is just under 1,000 feet. It's, it's, it's a good distance. And then it hooks right into pointing toward J.C. Penney's, the building. You don't have to exit there. You can continue to get back onto the 5 Freeway to go south, which is next interchange is Alicia Parkway. Exactly. Um, could, um, okay, so, so that was, so the second question was yours, and um, I understand that they have a, a proposals and they're working on it, and we have an interchange project to address all the cities, all the congestion. So, so that's, that's where we're at right now, is to address that. So can we go to the uh, next question? Yeah, I, if I may, I, I'd, I'd like to defer. You don't have a question? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll get back we'll, to you. We'll come around, we'll come around. We, we're trying to do one question per section in fairness and inclusive. Yes. Sir. Sure. I have two points I'd like to uh, suggest. One is, <clears throat> the noise. Uh, I spoke to your acoustic engineer for this project, and if I recall correctly, he indicated that there will be no sound barriers on the flyover. If I remember correctly, he said it would be 50 decibels. Now, in your one of the um, footnotes on the slide, it said substantial increase of 12 de decibels or more. Well, that's a lot of sound, 50 decibels. And so the question uh, with regard to the church, you need to look at how many decibels the acoustic engineer has indicated for that uh, overpass. The second point I want to make is, I wonder if you could comment about the businesses that are going to be affected. Because if I recall correctly, one or both of the alternatives will cause certain businesses such as McDonald's, Arby's, um, the green thumb, and maybe even in and out, if I recall correctly. Could you comment on which businesses are going to be affected? And the last point I'll make is, this is not going to answer the problem. We have more apartments being built, and you have so many, I'll be done in just a second, you have so many apartments being built, you have so many people going to be using these ramps. What you need to do is come up with mass transit. Um, th thank you. Before Dino, before Dino comments, to state to to state the obvious in light of the gentleman's conversation or comment rather, there is of course the no build, right? 
And so you, if you are of that opinion, uh, the comments allow you to do that as well. I'll leave it at that. I'll defer to Dino on the potential acquisitions, uh, not property takes, but acquisitions uh, under one of these scenarios. So the flyover has just barriers, but not sound walls. And there's the church right there. So provide that comment, write it down, submit it, email it. That's a good comment. The properties over here, all these businesses are impacted, so we shade it out. They all are impacted for this alternative, too. So can we go to the next alternative? D Dino, may I ask? Yes. Uh, so, that, so that the attendees understand, why would the acquisitions be potentially necessary under this scenario? If we see the open space there now, why would the properties need to be acquired? What is the reason that we would need to acquire them? Or Caltrans, rather, would need to acquire them? Because of this proposed off-ramp, there's no access on this side. And it's, and it's a complete uh, take of property. On this side, there is also no access. So all this is grayed out on this slide. And then you have this new on-ramp here, because it's not here anymore. You relocate it there. So this proposal gets the traffic off in this location and puts it on the other side of the freeway on that location, and thus impacts those properties. That's what, yes, that's, that's what this proposal is. This, uh, so in shorthand, the proposal would eliminate the access to the businesses. So in the case of Green Thumb, some of you may be familiar, they have four points of entry, right? And we've talked, I've talked to Mr. Burquest at his request. Under this scenario, that access to Green Thumb would be eliminated, the access. There is the remote possibility, but obviously these are things that would be cited after design, that you could restore access somehow through another entry. But if that doesn't happen, this is why it's identified as a potential acquisition. Now, uh, Dino, you'll correct me if I'm mistaken. Just very quickly, to provide some context and perspective. The other alternative, as you saw, where um, there is a point where the access may not be eliminated. Correct, Dino? Correct. And so therefore, the acquisition of that property would therefore not be required. And uh, you all are gonna be very disappointed in me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to defer to this, you have a question? Or mayor, you have a question? I'll defer to the mayor and then we'll go back to section four. I'm not the mayor. Uh, but, but, I, but I do have a statement. I live over by gate 10. I can hear the traffic on I-5 at gate 10. In the morning, during drive times, I can hear it. And it's a roar like the ocean. Something that has not been mentioned. Please look up here. What about our people who live right there when they're looking at that? You mean here like you. by gate, gate six? No one's mentioned the noise nor the view. And I'm hearing it at gate 10. Think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay, Jared, uh, section four, please. I was wondering if Los Alisos has been considered as an on-ramp or an off-ramp. Yes, it was a long time ago, but there was uh, many factors that didn't allow that. So the next best one was Altera 4, where we have hook ramps in front of J.C. Penney's. But the, we have the collector distributor road that goes underneath Los Alisos and on to Alicia Parkway and going southbound on the I-5. But that's a good question. We did look, we looked at a many, many, many different scenarios, different ideas, different alternatives, many years of, of actual careful thought. And always the first thing was no, no noise, no visuals, low cost, best traffic circulation, but because there's so much traffic in this area. This is one of the worst intersections in South County. 
There, we'll go to section five with Justin or Jared. I'll make one comment if, if you don't already know, and many of you do know. Chapter two or one is it, the one, uh, overview? One. Chapter, chapter one. Chapter one of the environmental document, it provides a, an executive summary, and it breaks it apart. So you're, if interested in noise, you could kind of quickly zoom to that, or you can go there. It, traffic operations. And I share it so that if you want to make your comment and you want to say the noise is intolerable, right, and you want to look at the data and support it with the data, that, as your city council knows and everyone knows, is all the better of a comment, right, because it's tied to that. I'll go back to, Ms. to Justin or Jared for section five, then we'll go to six and we'll come around. Sorry, folks, we're trying to get everybody. We'll, we'll rotate. Okay. I was interested in whether you had assessed uh, alternate traffic routes like uh, the toll road. Uh, my understanding from the time I spent on a toll road agency uh, and as mayor of the city was that uh, originally that toll road was supposed to be given back in 2025, which would be inside. I understand that uh, Okta has a conflict of interest here because it's extended uh, those toll roads, but wouldn't it be a lot better to open up that toll road, make it free since it's underutilized and it had really bad bottom ratings up until just recently when finally it began to catch up. Did you analyze that at all in your environmental impact report? I couldn't find it anywhere. No, it, our environmental impact area is in the vicinity of this interchange. Well, yeah, but the that's toll road, The toll roads are outside of this this area, this is a specific concentrated location. Well, and as, and a, math, as, a, as a former politician, a math professor, I'd, I'd tell you, your whole impact, environmental impact report is invalid because that has a direct effect on this. People can come into El Toro Road and into this community on that toll road if you will actually move up the date when you make it free and would be a lot less than the 241 million and reduce these problems that you have here. And if you haven't looked as that, at that as an alternative, I think maybe it's because somebody within your planning process has a conflict of interest. Uh, you know, the Orange County Transit Authority needs to look at the whole region. And from us, from the standpoint of Laguna Woods, to make that toll road free so that people in the other end of the city could start up at Ikea come all the way around, not have to get off on the freeway here, would reduce the impact here considerably. And if you haven't considered that, I think your environmental impact report is invalid, and I think it should be a no project. Um, thank, thank, thank you thank very you. much about this. Let me, let me just, let me, thank you very much. I'm expecting that comment to be recorded. So you're going to send an email, write it down, and mail it in, but that's that's a good comment, thank you. Um, section five, I'll go to Justin Lesnecki over here on the right. Ma'am, I saw you raise your hand and we'll get to you in a moment. Okay, my question is more, is a much smaller one. That last one was a good idea. The, um, the way you get on the uh, I-5 uh, north now from El Toro is to take that U-bend going right off of El Toro, you bend and right on, onto uh, going east on El Toro, take the U bend up until onto the freeway. That's a great way to get on. Now what's happening to that with it's, these new plans? It's unchanged. Okay, thank you. You're, the, the question is if you're traveling eastbound on El Toro, going under the bridge of the freeway, and you wanna go northbound, you just take the loop on ramp going north to five. It, it's section unchanged. six, bear with me, bear with me. We'll get to you, section six. Jared Hill, may I ask you the lady right to your right, or to your left, rather? She had a question. We'll go to section six, and then we'll come back around as we agreed. Uh, yes, I was very concerned about the noise level also, especially to those people at gate six that live along that way. First of all, I am at gate three, but down near Moulton, and I hear the freeway very, very often, and it's horrible when it's windy out. So I was very concerned about the noise level 
and mostly concerned because that flyover is not going to have walls to, to and it's going to be a, a constant drone because there's no interference in the traffic over that flyway. So I think that's a really big consideration to a community of seniors. I don't think we deserve to have to live with that kind of noise in the future. And I think something should be done at least about the walls. I also would like to know how you go about testing the sound level up there in that area when there's nothing there except to test it down below. And the noise level has to be very different whether you're on the ground or whether you're up in the air. So I'd like to understand that. Um, I also would like all of you to take into consideration the biggest factor of all, and that is that this is a community, I may not even be there by then, but uh, I hope I am, but we'll be living with a mess for a very long time with a lot of noise, and we want to wind up with something that doesn't create dirt, doesn't create noise, doesn't create any kind, and, and poor air quality. And I think in this day and age, with the amount of traffic increasing, because it's not just the housing that's being built in the mall, it's the housing all along Moulton that's being built also. And I think all those things should be taken into consideration. And I applaud the gentleman who said we need public transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Section six, back to section one. Uh, sir, can you tell me how much clearance there is between the point where the flyover passes over the sound wall at the edge of the Carlotta side of the freeway, behind, very close to behind uh, St. George's Church? There's a dotted line. Logan, we need uh, the video for alternative two. The, the bridge starts rising up from the freeway and like I said before, it apex over the freeway over 30 feet. So this is, this is where the highest point is here, in the northbound direction of the carpool lanes. Down here is where the level is, so it's rising up. So where the church is, is the question here, over here, what, what where, where? No, the church, church is right. The church is right here. Okay, I was. Okay, that works. Okay, so the question is, where are you asking the question about? Is it here or here? What? You want to know how high it is? When the flyover meets the wall, the sound wall, at the edge of the freeway. Right here. All right. What? property is underneath that area how it, close is it's it? still the freeway property it's not the it, it's oh. close but it's not over it it looks over but it's not there is some... no the, the church parking lot looks like it, it's over but it's separate so you don't go over any church property no. with the flyover not that i believe no it's, that's the that's the proposal all right, well, this is the second question. Are we, we're good? Okay. I'm in a very un unenviable position. No matter who I choose, someone else is gonna be upset. So you'll bear with me. Uh, I'm torn. This, this lovely lady's been waiting a long time as this, has this gentleman. If you could phrase your question in the form of a question. Okay. I see all the plants. And the, but what's not been addressed yet is during construction, what is the impact to this area? And one of the concerns is, yes, the flyover is terrific. What will, what will, how will that affect the traffic flow along the freeway? Good question. This alternative to you have these big columns, so you have a foundation that goes deep, deep in the ground. And there's two methods of putting those piles in. You can dr hammer them in, or you can drill holes and then f pour in the cement with the, with the rebar and, and create your own uh, piles. So that pounding makes a lot of noise. So that's an impact during construction. And you have to build these 
these these um, significant points for the bridge to be built. So for alternative, and, and also in, impacts this. It still stays the same, but when you construct this, it, it needs to be moved over here so you have walls that you have to be relocated at Carlotta. So that, that's, that's what you get for this alternative. The alternative four, you, you have impacting the church by taking the sound wall down and rebuilding it by putting a new system here, like I, I called it collector distributor road, and it goes right through there. So there will be impact here, and then building the new bridge over El Toro Road. So the impacts are over there, and then the northbound, you're building new on-ramps through the park, and the existing sound walls that are located here now will be relocated to the edge of the new on-ramp. I, I, would, I would add, I'm gonna go to this lady, and then this lady who has been most patient, but, but uh, allow me, you, you said about, you, you referenced the, the construction impacts. There, correct, correct, correct. Correct, and I want to make I want to clarify though the the study does provide an account of the temporary construction related traffic impacts, as it does to the construction impacts, including talking about things like dust or backing up or whatever it be may be. Those things have been calculated; they are part of the study. Having said that. If you find any of those objectionable on the data or as a matter of principle, if you just don't want them as a matter of principle, to state the obvious, you should comment that. And I would encourage you to come put it on record because as we said, the verbal comments, we're trying to answer questions. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. What makes you think that by the time you get this built in 2030, that it would alleviate congestion with all the building that's going in this area and all the apartments that have gone along Molten and the ones that are going into the mall and ones that have gone into Oak Brook. Do you really think by 2030 this will be ever alleviated? They did this in the valley and, the, and that freeway is just as congested as it ever was. So I don't think this is a, a solvable problem. So um, I studied this for many years. Uh, in the 70s, Orange County was probably half the population is now. And in the future, like 2030, I would imagine the population increases. So the roadway projects or the, any type of projects, they never keep up with the pace of, of, um, of growth. And that's, that, that's truth. But your point is well taken is that we're trying to improve the interchange. We're not fixing the, inter it's, it's an improvement. It's I've not never a silver heard, bullet. Yeah, I've never heard anybody said, I don't like Lake Forest interchange. Nobody has said that. But they all say about El Toro, because El Toro is very special. We have a lot of traffic here. So we're just trying to make this a little better to become like similar to Lake Forest interchange. I'm, I'm obligated question. to take the question here. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to build on what you just said. I'm concerned about the data that you're using. I have read your report, and your data is all so outdated. It does not work for now, and it's certainly not going to work for five years in the future. You're using a 2010 census, which is really, really going to change in one year. Plus, you have not taken into account or really worked with the uh, developers of that whole mall area. And that's going to be a tremendous input that does not show up anywhere. In fact, you have many of the buildings that are now occupied shown as um, empty. And you keep talking about J.C. Penney, which is not occupied and is going to be torn down and changed probably into condos. And I just don't think the data that you're basing all of your uh, environmental report on is current enough to be valid. We 
had, thank you. We had our traffic engineers study this up and down and all around. And we took many different uh, information and data and we really modeled this for future to improve it. So I'm very confident in our engineers that address this problems out here. So the data that we used was, um, was, was uh, it, 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 it addressed this proposals. So alternative two and four actually show an, an improvement to the interchange. So thank you. I'm, I'm gonna go to this gentleman here. He waited the first, first round, sir. I'm a bit new to this whole study and just to get updated, is this video on, our, on your website? Yes, it is. Are you going to do an additional video to change some of the things? No, Update we don't this? plan to. No? Okay. But at least we can view it on, on our own time. The, the video is, is, in fact, available on um, the OCTA website and is also available on YouTube for you to, um, to view. Uh, if you exit and you want to jot down my email and ask me for the link, email me, feel free. We're going to go to section, and I know your folks are standing, but I'm getting hands everywhere. Section, my counting's off, five in the middle. <laughs> Sir. In your opening comments, did I understand you to say that where the flyway goes over, you're going to put two lanes onto De La Carta approximately at gate six, back down at the bottom, yes, and that, it, did I understand you correctly? We, we, um, this is, this is, this road is unchanged, but- That's you know, De La Carta, correct? Correct. Carlotta. But, Carlotta, but this, this- um, Come on back down, down off screen, does that, how many lanes comes off the freeway there? You That's, said you're going to pull lanes off the freeway approximately at gate six. I, I think he may have no. been, Dino, you'll correct me. I think, could you, if you are traveling southbound on the I-5, and if for the sake of discussion, this is not a foregone conclusion, if you're traveling southbound on the I-5, and you want to get to El Toro on Lake Forest, you will have the flyover. Dino, how many lanes will have access to the flyover? One. And the other lane will be on the freeway and open up to two lanes to get to the existing off-ramp by the church. Well, that, that brings you off on uh, uh, De Australia. But if I understood you correctly, you said that coming off the freeway, two lanes go over the flyway and two lanes go on to De La Carta. Is that correct or not? No. This, okay. May, this is, I'll, I'll this, is the, this is the Carlotta separate from this freeway. This is the freeway side, this is the street side. Let me, okay, let me, then, let me. Then no, no traffic gets off of the freeway onto De La Carta back short of um, no. the other side of the church. No, nothing gets off the freeway here. It gets off here as existing. It's the, let me, it's, it's the existing off ramp. Let me, uh, in, in the interest of clarity, let's, let's segment everything for a moment, if I may. So, Dino, answer this question. Under alternative two, the flyover, what happens to Avenida de la Carlota right here? Does it change the number of lanes? Do we add more lanes? No. No. It stays the same. Nothing on Avenida de Carlota, right? Now, the flyover. If you decide to enter the flyover to proceed southbound and exit onto El Toro and get off the freeway in the vicinity of the McDonald's and the gas station, how many lanes from the freeway will access the flyover? How many, Dino? One. One lane. And then on the freeway, 
how many lanes will move towards the current exit at El Toro Carlota? How many? It will be same. one lane here and opens up to two lanes there. Correct. It opens up onto two lanes. Correct. So that's our answer segment by segment. We'll go to seg uh, station six over there. Do we have a question, station six? Uh, if please. <laughs> please. If you build, this is at the current El Toro exit, the current one is where I'm referring, by the church. If you build a new sound wall at the current El Toro exit and replace it, what is the disposition of the current wall and how will it encroach upon the church property right on the corner? In, in, during construction, it has to be tear, tuck, taken down to, to build improvements for that alternative four, not two, and then the, build, the wall gets reconstructed that, within the same location, approximately the same location. So the impacts are, are, are uh, just the, during construction. No, the three years is the whole life of the project, but you build projects in pieces. So it depends on the staging of the, the pieces being built. Uh, Dino, as foreseen, right? As foreseen, and this is this is available in visual format on the on the report, chapter one. You can see it quickly uh, if you haven't already, of course. Under alternative two, is there any need foreseen need to acquire any part of the structure at the church? Yes or no? No. No. Under alternative four, is there any need to acquire any part of the church structure? Under alternative no. four. No. There is the need for the wall to acquire some temporary construction easement, correct? Correct. And that, if, if it were to pass, it is, is subsequently restored, correct? Correct. Okay. Section one, and I'm going to ask uh, that gentleman. Did you ask your question? Yeah, this gentleman here. We'll get to you, David. As I sit here and look at this, that you're gonna go over that overpass onto El Toro. You're gonna hit lights, and there are lights up and down that whole street that uh, right now, I don't see that it's gonna make any changes because right now you get off, you make that whole circle and come around, the lights are a problem, but I don't see that this is gonna solve anything because all you're gonna do is back traffic up all the way over the top. Uh, at right now, I, I've never seen traffic really stop and s stop the traffic on southbound five. Not if you stay in the right lane. <laughs> well, point well taken. David, um, this yeah. lady here in the navy blue or black. Hi. Okay. Um, no well, one let me yet. answer the question. Oh. Yeah. It's, so what this idea is to move over the traffic to, to lessen the impacts to this off-ramp. So if the lights that you say don't work and they back up, backs up onto this connector. But we've, we have a computer model that we ran through and it was at the public hearing. It shows that it flushes out the traffic, but yes, there's, there's signals that all go all the way past Rockfield and into the city of Lake Forest. I and understand. You have a good point there. I understand, and they probably all ought to be uh, set green for the main road, and every so often then you let the side roads flow through for a certain amount of time, and then, because right now it all just gets backed up. Okay, so you're gonna give us a uh, comment then, email us a comment on that. That's a, that's a good comment, thank you. Ma'am. Okay, I noticed on the cross sections that you had two lanes added to each side, north and south. That means you're going to have to be um, working on the underpass to make it larger. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, can you go back? So that's to that? going to be a mess. Well, alternative two has the flyover. It's a long, angled structure. Alternative four has a structure also, but it's short. But it's it's right over El Toro. So it there will the be construction thing. on the over on the under under crossing. underpass, whatever you call it. Under crossing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
And, and just remember that this is an independent roadway system from the freeway lanes going southbound five, and that improves the operations of, of where the church on and off ramps are, and then the new on and off ramps proposed on the other side of El Toro. So again, it spreads out the, the traffic. Um, I'm gonna go to this lady in the front who's also been waiting, then we'll turn to section three. Question? Sorry folks, we'll, we'll do more rounds. Um, building on what uh, Mrs. Uh, Stillman, well, actually now I forget what you did say, Mrs. Stillman, because Never mind. Uh, okay, I I'm sorry, there are so many, I, I know you have your guidelines and I know, oh, they said we had to use these figures, but there are so many bad and mishmashed figures in the environmental report, I, I don't know how we can trust, not you guys personally, you're doing your job, but how we can trust the accuracy of any of this, like, oh yeah, they say it's gonna be fine. I challenge you, to come to my house because I am the little white roof right next to Carlota in all the pictures. Come on over to my house sometime and listen to the noise. Now, I'm not complaining about where I live. I chose that house. I'm fine with it. However, as far as you guys saying, it's all peachy, clean, peachy keen. We, uh, every single day, I have a new buildup of black. I don't mean gray. I don't mean, I mean black. It's made up of. Where's it at? In my house. Oh, it's not there. You, it, you have to look at the over. I'm more this way. That might even be it right there. Okay. See that one on the bottom? Here. The white one. That's mine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and come on over sometime and help me dust, okay? Because my little dust claws don't have brown on them. It's black. And what that is is that's rubber and oil and God knows what. Okay, and that's without construction. And as far as the noise goes, if I'm speaking a little loudly, this is nothing. I need a microphone because in my little teeny weeny house, my husband can't hear me when he's in the next room unless I yell. Now, again, I'm, I love my little place. We pretend it's a river. And that black stuff, it's hard to pretend what that is. We, even, we have two expensive Dyson air purifiers and I still get that crap all over everything. So I guess my question is, would you like to come over sometime and have a chat and, and breathe deeply? And then we'll talk about a lot of construction that's coming down the road and wider freeways and more crap, which frankly, I think you guys designed the El Toro intersection, didn't you? I trust what you've said. I have no reason to doubt it. I'll accept your invitation, your kind invitation. But I want, I have no right to tell you what to say and what to do, no right whatsoever. But I do have the responsibility to remind you your comments are respected as I said at the outset. I said that, we meant it. We respect your comments, but I will very respectfully remind you, in addition to telling us right now, please write them down. It is possible that some of your comments will be shared by others. But if not, and you don't write it down, then your comment will not be added and considered to the record. I wanna make clear, I'm not egging you on to write a comment. I'm simply very respectfully reminding you of the process. So I appreciate your point, and we'll go over to this lady in section three, section four, and so on. Uh, please forgive me if I'm redundant. S tell me right away and I'll stop. Um, has there been any discussion, if any of you were at the meeting last night or, and or earlier today, I was at a previous meeting, missed the beginning, about Ridge Route. Has that come up at all? And I know that's a city-city issue, but I want to say this first anyway. Has there been any discussion today about Ridge Route in any way, shape, or form? No, Ridge Route is down below here, right? It is. Okay. Can you can this be flipped? Is there a slide on this? There that's is. The northbound. Okay. Uh, um, the video would do. That's it. Isn't? Yeah, isn't Ridge Route right yeah. there where the arrow is? Yeah, thank yes, you. It is. So that's the dirt pile that's already on Ridge Route, just just waiting for a ramp. Um, you mean an overcrossing? Yeah, 
Well, no, that isn't what I mean. Okay. My thinking since I moved here five years ago has been consistently. We need to get that overpass built. And from that overpass, we need one of those little pocket on and off ramps, straight parallel with the freeway. You've got the green belt there anyway. Like when you go to LA at Overland and Pico, you know, those little, and mostly the neighborhood people know about it. There's not a lot of heavy signage. One of, I feel, the additional contributors to the madness at El Toro is eventually most of the gates from this multiple gate village dumps onto Del Toro at some point or another. Either you get there from Moulton or you get there from Carlotta because that's just where everything's happening. So if I were looking at that, I believe it was number four that has the egress and entrance in and out of five lagunas, whatever that's going to morph into. It was a couple, you had that yes. slide. You yes. know what I'm talking about. The one You're that's correct. just a dirt field and the two lanes in. Um, in addition to all the other people that I sense are concerned about, we've had... Uh, this is what you're talking about, correct, ma'am? Where you have on the bottom right-hand corner the mall? It was almost a... The mall. Well, you're, you're, ta you're referencing oh, yeah. okay. the video. Okay, it was at another angle, but yeah, that's correct. it. Okay. That, to me, looks good because it's in sort of wide open space. It's not near residences. It addresses those noise and dust and all those issues. But further, now, if I could impose on you to go back to where the little edge of Ridge Road is. The, on the slide. What's happening, because Lake Forest has no northbound entrance from Moulton or from Carlotta, everybody has to make that right, where they've tripled that mall where IHOP and Pepino's and all those places are. It forces everyone to make the left onto Rock Ridge and go down to Bake. I think a lot of the, the El Toro congestion is because there's no good alternative, at least for northbound, except to go to El Toro, do the cloverleaf, and catch north there because you've got to go past Lake Forest to Bake. Everybody from the auto mall, everybody from those businesses, they're all piling back to El Toro. If I had my druthers, and I've been told it might be too late, I would really do a serious study about Ridge Road and a little on-off on-ramp on both sides of the freeway, north and southbound, which would pull a lot of the traffic out of our village. It would pull from all those residences north of your building site area there, all the way up to potentially halfway past Lake Forest toward Bake. And those people wouldn't have to come down to El Toro anymore. So it wouldn't be addressing the location of El Toro in five, but it would probably suck off a good third of those that are going there. And now with 15, I believe it'll be 1,500 residences? Just in Five Lagunas? Or when you add, okay, plus 400, 400 behind Woody's. And another, Sof uh, Sophie is how many? 600? So I mean, what's, what's the total? That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to determine. Say, well, six and four is 1,000, and then the... Is the proposal for instead of the mall, the buildings? Around three thousand. Oh God. And a, and a three acre. It's funny. Uh, I've been through park. this in the last. It must be my fault. I've been through this in the last three places I've lived. So can I Malls answer your freeway. question though? Yeah. So Folks. the so the ridge route is over here. Correct. So parallel to the freeway lane, you're, just drop you're saying a to put some ramp. on ramps here. And yeah. a, and an off ramp. So a ramp up to Ridge, a ramp down to five, and on both sides. The actual spacing between an on-ramp and an off-ramp are just on top of each other. And we looked at that, and, and it's a good idea. You mean the off-ramp off from Ridge south would bang into the opening? Or can, sorry, I'm a teacher. 
Um, you're, I think you're saying that it, just the, the required footage distance for Correct. acceleration, et cetera. Let, let, I hate to, to interject and stop. We're at 15 till seven, many people are leaving. Uh, we want to wrap this up. We'll take one question from each section, beginning with four. From, from a person who hasn't asked a question, please, and let me very quickly remind you, drop your card in the box, fill out your form if you wish, and make sure to place it in the bucket and we will transport it. With respect to, uh, very quickly, to ramps that are very close together, the 22 in the vicinity of Orange, in the vicinity of the, the Crush, those ramps are very close together and that has caused a lot of problems. I'm not saying it's here, but that's a good reference point. Um, please ask us, please write down what you'd ask us to do. Questions? Thank you. Question, David, David, uh, excuse me. David, go ahead. In a form of a question, please, to wrap up. If you'll show the other view of this flyover alternative, it becomes rather obvious that the truck bypass feeds this and the, the rigs are going to utilize this flyover to get to El Toro and to go north. That, on, that flyover is an uphill pull. You're going to have noise and you have no noise abatement between that flyway and the church or any of those residents along that De La Carta. None. And the noise is going to be horrendous when those rigs are pulling that hill. Okay, thank you. Um, penultimate question, second to last question in section six. And then we'll come here and we'll conclude. If you would, please. Hi, thank you. Um, you did mention that the structure of St. George's Church would not be affected. Does that include the parking lot? Yes, it thank includes you. the parking lot. Thank you. This section here. <clears throat> what? Mr. Parker, I apologize. Two questions. Um, number one, uh, relative to the congestion management of El Toro. Does alternative two or four relieve congestion? Which one relieves congestion the most? They both relieve congestion, but alternative four has a higher traffic benefit. Okay. Second question is, um, economically, the taking of property uh, with alternative two versus four, what is the financial difference in the taking cost projected for those two? The, the current cost for alternative two is 175 million, and the, the current cost for this alternative four is 241 million. That's the overall cost. What is the difference between the two? Round it up. Is that fair enough, Mr. The Park? properties are impacted here for alternative four, and the properties impacted here on, on, on the park. And alternative two, you have impacts mostly over here. Uh, Dino, uh, I think a question to clarify. The difference in cost for right-of-way impacts between alternative two and alternative four, generally speaking, is there a difference between the cost? Yes, the right-of-way, um, roughly alternative four is 150 million, and then um, alternative uh, two would be uh, Let's see uh, if I could remember. It's uh, which, is, get, which, is which is most which is more costlier, Dino? Off the top of your alternative head, alternative four is more costly. Alternative four is more costly. Alternative four is more costly for right away, but it's more effective in, tra uh, in traffic. So you're seeing many uh, less impacts for alternative four, but a higher cost. Okay. 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 Yo, I'm gonna okay. exercise a little privilege. 
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna ask this gentleman's gonna ask a question, and we're gonna end with this lady here in red, and then we'll we'll convene for the evening. Thank you very much in advance. We apologize for any unintentional error we may have committed. We Sir. thank you very much for your presentation. You. I'm glad that you included our village for consultation and uh, in conjunction with the mall rebuilding and so forth. My question is very simple. What, why can't you put a sound wall on a flyover? Why, if it's gonna be there, it's 30 feet high, so why can't it be 45 feet high? It, one is as objectionable view as the other, so why can't we put sound walls on the flyover? The short answer to your question is, I, Dino, could you speak to that very question? What I was told that it, it, it doesn't improve the noise because it has an effect to uh, closely spaced walls on both sides of that off-ramp flyover structure. Let me, so that's let me, what I understand. Let me then say, if you would, your question is a fantastic one, I think. Allow us then to get back to you to ask that question, to see, understand what, what yes, what constraints there are, and we'll get back to you, and we'll end with this lady's question. Thank you. Um, going back to, could you put the other alternative four thing up there that showed the El Toro the video. Can we put the video going under the five? Yes. Get, can we show the video, uh, alternate four? And that's called the under, under crossing bridge that's widening. Okay, thank that's you. That. Yeah, um, in that widening of the under crossing bridge, as you just called it, um, one of my concerns is um, I think we should have some consideration for better mobility. If you have people going under the five from El Toro from one side or the other, um, it is probably one of the most dangerous places in the United States. Um, I want an alternative for. Um, and that's so narrow, there is no possibility for people, there, there yes, is. that's the one. There's no possibility for people now to get under there um, if they're disabled and they're in uh, walkers or wheelchairs. They can't get through there. Um, I personally would not walk under that. I know there's a sidewalk. And if I were a bicyclist, I'd be terrified. Is that going to be improved for more mobility for people who are not in cars? The bridge uh, is not going to be removed because the structure uh, edge that holds the bridge up mm -hmm. um, is right next to the lanes right now. So it would have to be re removed and rebuilt in order to make that space. And so no, it's, this project does not address that. Okay. Um, and the alternative for one, which picture we didn't get up there, but that was a pretty good one. Um, we'll play the video a little bit further and we'll get the proposed. Yeah, because I want to see what happens to, if we don't remove those shops, that one, yes. So this one maintains those shops and the restaurants uh, by uh, McDonald's and Arby's and the Green Thumb and Correct. those optician and stuff? Yes. Okay, so it maintains those. Thank you. Uh, last thing, two things. May 20th is your deadline. Do not necessarily, you do not have to restrict yourself to the comment today. You can add further comment. If you'd like to take a comment card for your neighbors, please feel free to do it. All of this, they're outside in the lobby. Thank you for that. Uh, all of this is available online at OCTA.net and also at Caltrans. The websites, you, if you have a camera phone, you can take a quick picture, but you can look us up. Uh, May 20th. And finally, thank you very much to Mr. Macon, his staff, your council, and the village associations for the pleasure and privilege to come out here. Thank you, have a good night, and again, our apologies if we committed an error. Bye-bye.